Well, I'm so excited that you have chosen to visit us. This is Dominion Church International. We have chosen to bring this as an online church whereby we come live every time on YouTube and on Facebook. The reason is to see that you have the Word of God at your place of safety and comfort. My name is Enoch Jordan, and I'm so excited that I'll be able to walk you through the time of our program throughout the week in online services. Every Tuesday, we go online as a very important service, and that is from 6 to 7 p.m. Our resident pastor, Pastor John Mbasira, brings the Word of God, which helps us to grow, to mature in the Lord, and he brings it every time. Right now, we are working on the book of Revelation, which is a special word. You know, it's revealing the book in a revolutionary way to this revolutionary generation, we want to grow in the Word. And every Friday, we have the Holy Spirit revival, lunch hour service. And you know, that is a service that is always brought to you by our senior pastor, Reverend Robert Kasiwe. I'm going to tell you the truth, you don't want to miss this service. It's a great service. You know, we bring it at exactly 1 up to 2 p.m. at your place of work. You can go online, even at at home, you can go online. You can also invite friends to make sure that they are also online and they are not missing this word. And every Sunday, it's a special Sunday. We make sure the word of God is at your doorstep. You just got to turn on online and you have the word of God. We bring it at exactly 10 up to 11 a.m. And I want to remind you that when you're watching this, you want to share. Please click the word share and then you share it on Facebook if you're watching on YouTube. And then you you can also share to your friends that are on WhatsApp, to other groups on WhatsApp. We can all preach and spread the gospel. Also, as a very special reminder, I want to bring to your mind that you can continue supporting and giving to the ministry. We have the numbers that are shared on the screen. Please make sure you're able to put your seed, your ties, or your offertory. You can actually send it there in that number. Allow me to remind you that it is actually praise that moved the walls of Jericho in a very special way. Help me welcome the awesome, glorious, wonderful Georgia's Praise Ministries, Dominion Praise Ministries. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord wherever you are. Stand up and put on your dancing shoes. Get excited to praise your way out. If you're sick on your bed, get excited to get healed. There is power in praise and there is power in worship.
us alive up to this day. He's worthy of our praises. The one that has sustained our lives up to this day. He's worthy of our worship. Come on, somebody, just go on and worship the Lord. Come on and worship the Lord. The Lord is awesome in this place. The Lord is worthy in this place. There is none that, like, that is like our God. He is awesome. He is great. He is worthy. We join the 24 elders to worship. We join the 24 elders to bow down. Somebody just worship the Lord in your own words. He is worthy. You worthy. You worthy, O oh God. Awesome you are. And we season is to come we bow down and worship Yahweh he is worthy of our praise and we
days on this planet called earth 
the short days that God gives to us. He owns it. And at a certain point of time, God will call you home. Because He's the one that determines. But I believe that before He calls you home, He will heal you and bless you and, and change you. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor. Thank you. Thank you so much for helping us to understand that our lives are not our own. You own our lives. You own our days. You know our future. You know our present. You know everything concerning us. The Bible calls you the Alpha and the Omega. The Bible calls you the first and the last. The Bible calls you the beginning and the end. The Bible calls you the ancient of days. The Bible calls you the author and then the finisher all of our faith. You are our Genesis. And you are also our revelation. We bless your name. And we give you glory. In the name of Jesus. And everybody say Amen. We give him all the praise. Give him all the glory. Let every instrument praise him. Let everything that has breath Give him all the glory In the mighty name of Jesus Glory to his name Hallelujah Hallelujah Thank you, praise and worship ministry God bless you We love you Thank you for serving God. To all you wonderful people, our church members online, the members of the body of Christ, we greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And I believe God is blessing you and God is taking you places. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are watching, I want you to know that God is where you are and is going to make a big, big difference. And your life will not remain the same in the name of Jesus. If you have your Bible with you, would you please go to the book of Matthew, the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 9, and we're reading from verses 35. Last Sunday, we read from verses 1 up to 32. We looked at different miracles Jesus performed. He healed the woman with the issue of blood. He raised the daughter of Jairus. He opened the blind eyes. He did many wonderful things. And we say to you, He did it on the basis of faith. But not his faith. Let me say that again. The miracles that are recorded except one miracle. When they brought a man who was demon possessed but the rest of the miracles Jairus' daughter the centurion they Woman with the issue of blood. The two blind men that came to Jesus. He healed them on the basis of their 
faith. He healed them on the basis of their faith. He didn't heal them on the basis of his faith. He didn't heal them on the basis of his grace and anointing. To the centurion. He said, I've never seen such a great faith. To the woman with the issue of blood. He said, Thy faith has made you whole. To Jairus, he said, Only believe. To the blind people, he said, Let it be done according to your faith. And when I read those scriptures, I get an understanding, but also an encouragement. That my healing is not going to depend on other people. It's not going to depend whether Jesus is here or whether Jesus is there. But it's going to depend on the faith that I release in Jesus' grace and ability in the mighty name of Jesus. But today, I want us to go to Matthew chapter 9. As we conclude that great chapter of healing and miracles. Verse 35 says, And Jesus went about all cities, mark all cities, and villages. He went to every city and every village. If that was Uganda, he would reach to every city we have. Kampala, Jinjambale, Kavale, Tungamo, Kisoro, Toro, Masaka. And then from the cities we have, we will go to every village. Maybe your village is in Kokonjedo. Maybe your village is Kavasanda. My village is in Jerere. I don't know about your village. But he will come to every village. He will come to every city. And the Bible goes on to say, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And so in every synagogue, in every village, and in every city, the Bible says, he taught, he preached, but he healed everyone. He healed everyone that he found sick. He healed everyone that he found sick. And they were sick with diverse kind of sickness. Some of them had ulcers. Some of them had cancer. Some of them had tumors. Some of them were blind. Some of them had back pains. Some of them had arthritis. But he healed them from every known disease. From every known disease. In every city and in every village the results were the same. If he, if he happened to come to your village every sick will be healed. And from your village to your city every sick in your city will be healed. When he visit the hospitals he will heal every, everyone in the hospital to let us know there's no disease there is no sickness I can't heal let me say it again to let us know that there is no sickness there is no disease that it cannot heal we are living in a day where we are so much concerned about COVID and understand where you should be coming from but I want you to know Jesus can kill COVID he has healed COVID before and he will heal COVID in the name of Jesus. There is no sickness that he cannot heal. Most of us are so much afraid about COVID that anything that 
can calm your life. You, you are, are not, not afraid. But when they mention COVID, you got so afraid. But God wants you to know the Jesus we serve, our Lord and Savior, still heals every sickness and still heals every disease. And whatever sickness you have, He will heal you today. And also, if you get sick tomorrow, He will heal you. If you get sick two years from now, He will still heal you. If there are diseases that will come that we have never known, that have no medical help or solution, He will still heal them. I hearing me somebody because He is a healer. And so every city he went. The Bible says He healed every sickness and also He healed every disease among the people. Every sickness and every disease. When they talk about disease, they are talking about chronic sicknesses. There are sicknesses that passes on to people from generation to generation. He heals them also in the mighty name of Jesus. So get ready to get healed. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what encouraged me about the scripture that he went to every city. He went to every village. Why? Because he wants people to be well. Jesus yes. wants you to be well. Jesus yes. wants you to be well. God yes. wants you to be well. The God Almighty, the God of this Bible, wants you to be well. Not only the physical sicknesses, but there are some of us that are sick financially. There are some of us that are sick emotionally. There are some of us that are sick because of fear. But He is going to heal every sickness. Let it be financial sickness. Let it be emotional sickness. Let it be physical sickness. He will heal it today in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Bible tells us in the next verse. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. In every city he went, he healed but also in notes that the people that were sick they were sick because they had no shepherd did you hear what I just said he healed the sick he set free the captives he opened the blind eyes he removed tumor from people's lives and as he heals them as he blesses them he notices that the reason why Satan has scattered them the reason why Satan has inflicted them. The reason why they are in that condition because they have no shepherd. They have no, they have no one who can comfort them. They have no one who can lift them. There's no one who can fight for them. There's no one who can help them. There's no one who can cover them. There's no one who can look for food for them. And so all of them were scattered because, because they had no shepherd. But the good news is according to the book of John chapter 10 Jesus said these words I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. The good shepherd give his life for for the sheep. God wants you to know what is probably afflicting you is not because of sickness but because there is no one 
probably to defend you or to prevent or to heal you but the good news is Jesus as a good shepherd he came to take a role of shepherding you of protecting you of healing you yes they are no shepherd but when he came right there he became their shepherd when he came right there he became their healer when he came right there he became their lifter when he came right there he says I am here you will suffer no more I will bless you I will heal you when I look at you the problem why you are suffering because you have no shepherd but since I'm here I am going to become that shepherd not only to shepherd you but I'm going to give my life and 2,000 years ago he did and in giving his life the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah 53 that he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him and by his stripes we were healed so when he stood in their midst he was telling them the shepherd has come sickness will be be no more. The shepherd has come. Demons will be no more. The shepherd has come. Torment will be no more. The shepherd is here. Can I announce to you ladies and gentlemen. The shepherd is here. Sickness will be no more. The shepherd is here. Fear has to go. Death has to leave. He has come. But there's something also. The Bible mentioned about this shepherd. That when he saw them. In that state. He was moved. With compassion. The shepherd. The shepherd Jesus. He has compassion. And compassion. Is the ability. Gaman. To feel for somebody. And then make a difference. Let me say it again. Compassion. Is to feel for somebody. Who is sick. Who is dying. Who doesn't know where to go. And you come in his life. And then you show him the way. You come on his deathbed. And you say to him. Like he said to Jairus' daughter. Talitha kumi Which means Daughter arise So he is not just a shepherd But being a shepherd He has compassion There are many of us Who feel for people But because we are limited We can't do anything about it But this great shepherd The bishop of our souls Our Lord and our Savior He has compassion Not only to feel for you but also to reach out that if you are sick he has the grace and the anointing to heal you are you hearing me and we have a record for us in the book or in the four gospels demonstrating or showing to us Jesus is compassion. It is recorded for us nine times. If you have a pen over there, I want you to write Matthew 14, 14. I want to also to write Matthew 15, 32. I want you also to write Matthew 20 and verse 34. 
In Matthew chapter 20 verse 34. As Jesus leaves Jericho. There are two blind men. Who cried for him. And begin to tell Jesus. Please do something about it. And the Bible says. He had compassion on them. And when he had compassion on them, he touched their eyes and they became open. It was compassion that brought healing. When we go to the book of Mark, chapter 1 and verses 41, there is a leper. Jesus healed him. Yes, we are and the Bible mentioned he had compassion. Now, if you have a pen again, you can write Mark chapter 5, verses 19. And you can write Mark chapter 6, verse 34. And you can write Mark chapter 8 and verses 2. All those verses they are talking about Jesus' compassion. Demonstrate healing. He healed them because of compassion. He fed them because of compassion. He opened their blind eyes because of compassion. He cleansed that leper because of compassion. Our shepherd is very compassionate. And because of his compassion, I see healing flowing to you. Because of his compassion, COVID will not COVID cover the entire globe. Somehow, he will show up as he has been showing up to bring healing to thousands. thousands. If you have not been healed yet, I am here to declare to you he is going to heal you not because you are so great and important but because he is very compassionate. We serve a God who is very compassionate. But let me give you one more. When you go to the book of Luke chapter 7 and verse 13 the compassionate Jesus the compassionate master the compassionate shepherd shows up at the gates of the city by the name Nain. And as he gets in to the city there is a people that are getting out of the city and the bible says on their shoulders they were carrying a casket and in this casket there was a young man the father had passed years ago and the mother was struggling to raise the child then one morning the child died and so that morning or that afternoon they made this journey to the tombs. They didn't know that the compassionate Lord, the compassionate Jesus is coming their way. And so as they get out of the city, he was coming in the city. And then he looked at them. He says, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to stop for a moment. He did ask how the young man died. He looked at them. So in pain. The mother lost her husband. And now the only son. And they're in tears. I can, I, can, I, can, I can understand where the mother was coming from. Maybe the boy was the only hope. Maybe he was in the medical school of their time. A very promising child. But he had no shepherd. And so Satan scattered him. And the great shepherd shows up. And says this one. 
cannot go to the grave when I have compassion. This one cannot go to the grave when I have mercy. This one is mine. And then he stopped them. And then he told the young man, get out. And the compassion of Jesus draw him and the healing began to flow. And the boy was resurrected. And then he returned the boy to the mother. And I believe at that moment I can see all of them turning around <laughs> and following Jesus. Because how can you not follow him? How can you not? Uh, uh, in an amazement they're saying glory. Can you imagine what's supposed to be the end of life? Life has begun again. And I can see the mother saying every time there's a problem I'm going to call upon Jesus. And I want you to know when you trust him like that, his compassion and his mercy will come to you. Whenever there is a problem, you will have the faith. You will have the faith. You will have the faith. And God Almighty will reach out to you and he will bless you. Are you in an hospital right now? Are you in a bed somewhere? Are you wondering which direction to take? What is it that is burdening you? What is it that is bothering you? What is your problem? The great shepherd is coming your way right now. But before it comes to him, is bringing the good news to you. And the good news is you don't have to wait whenever there is a problem. But if you invite me to come in your heart as your Lord and Savior I can always be there as a shepherd but more so as a compassionate Savior. So whenever there is a sickness I will kill you. Whenever there is hopelessness, I will become that hope. So wherever you are, if you have never committed your life to this compassionate Jesus, so that you can always draw from his mercy, I want you to raise your hands and I want you to pray after me as a prayer inviting Jesus to come for your healing, to come for your deliverance. I want you to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for sending Jesus with compassion. Thank you for sending Jesus to be my shepherd, to be my savior. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. And so today, in the mighty name of Jesus, I receive Jesus in my Lord, in my life. And from today, I surrender my life. I invite his grace. I invite his mercy. I invite his presence. I invite his person to come in my life. Save my life, Jesus. Be my Lord and Savior. I surrender totally to you. In the name of Jesus, I accept your grace. I accept the gift that God gave according to John chapter 3, verse 16. The Bible tells me for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord, that I have received life now in Jesus' name. Now, when Jesus comes, he does not only bring salvation, but he also brings healing. I want you to touch where you feel the pain. I want you to touch where you feel the pain. The Bible tells us in the book of Mark, chapter 16, that this son shall follow them that believe. In the name of Jesus, when they shall lay hands on the sick, the sick shall recover. I'm not 
not where you are. But now you are a believer. Lay your hand upon where you feel the pain. And if it is a pocket, lay your hand on your wallet. Whatever the sickness is. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your grace to heal. We thank you for your power to heal. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every sickness. I rebuke every disease. I speak the spirit of infirmity that has caused the pain, that has caused the headache, that has brought cancer, that has brought known disease and unknown disease, that has brought COVID, that has brought HIV. I command you to leave. Leave their lungs, leave their blood veins, leave their souls, leave their bodies. In the name of Jesus, get out! And I command every disease to die now. Every disease die. Every disease die. To the roots. In the name of Jesus. And I release God is healing to you. From your head up to the soles of your feet. Be healed. Let the grace and the power of God touch you from your head up to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' name. Now raise those hands and thank God for your healing. Father, we thank you for healing your people. Now exercise as your faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Get out of that bed and begin to give praise to God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As always, when we preach and we praise, we also get a moment to appreciate God with our giving. The number is always on your screen. The Bible tells us God loves a cheerful giver. Now give cheerfully. The Bible says if we give liberally we shall also receive liberally. The Bible says when we give we shall receive back good measure pressed down shaken together running over that is coming to you as you give your time as you give your offering as you bring it to church Father I bless your people as they honor the principles of giving and receiving your word says in the book of Proverbs that if we honor you with our first fruits our stores will burst with increase. Your word tells us in the book of Malachi if we honor you with our tithes and our offerings, the windows of heaven will open. Thank you because they are opening now. And I bless your people. Let everything they touch be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Please join our media platforms until we meet again remember we are praying for you remember we love you remember we believe in God who is compassion and is going to have compassion in fact he is having compassion for you right now in the name of Jesus God bless you until we meet again Amen and Amen Amen